Well, good morning. First of all, I'd like to, to well, first of all, it's nice seeing some of my patients out there, healthy and doing well. And it was, uh, I'm not going to send you a bill for, uh, uh, for seeing me this morning. Uh, So I can speak louder? You can hear me? Well, good. Well, thank you. First of all, I wanted to acknowledge um, the importance of uh, patient advocacy groups. Uh, I was telling Amy from the um, uh, I was telling uh, Amy from the New York Times that um, a lot of times in medicine we're kind of pretty good at uh, you know getting the DNA sequences right, but we're sometimes not very good at um, uh, at communicating what we're doing to um, to society not just to patients, but also to interested, in, interested individuals. So having patient advocacy, advocacy groups such as uh, AIM, and also having members of the, uh, of the press who are interested not only in the science, but also in the, um, um, in the human dimension of, of this disease, I think is very important. I think it really adds a lot to, um, to what we do in medicine. I want to tell you just a very short story about the history of the melanoma program in the um, Really, the mid-90s, there were essentially uh, three of us who were interested in this disease. It was John Glaspie in medical oncology, and I can tell you that in the mid-90s, really there weren't there weren't a lot of things that we could offer to uh, patients uh, with um, uh, with melanoma. But he he came to me and said, "I'll help you. I'll help you do this. We'll work together as a team with Alistair Cochran." And we decided then and there we were going to use good science and. Um, um, and we were not going to be um, 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 representing anything to patients except what we thought was the best at the time. But slowly we built um, um, a, a team, uh, which uh, uh, really the lead, uh, I think the lead now investigator is uh, Tony Ribas, who came to my laboratory as a, a postdoctoral fellow. Then I went to John uh, about six months later and said, this guy's really smart. We, you need to train him and hire him onto the faculty, and now he's our valued colleague uh, and um, 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 one of the um, now internationally recognized um, uh, experts in, uh, in the biology and treatment of melanoma. Bartosz Chmielowski, one of the best medical oncologists uh, I've, uh, I've worked with, and an increasing uh, group of, of, of basic and clinical investigators, Roger Lowe, um, Really a remarkable a scientist and uh, uh, MD PhD in um, in the dermatology, Richard Koya, basic scientist, Thinley Choden, Begonia Komen Anduit, Paul Tume. We're going to be recruiting in uh, July one, and so Tony, with our support, has built this remarkable team of of basic translational and clinical scientists, and also clinicians uh, treating this disease. About five years ago, I was minding my own business in my office, and I got a call from uh, David Baltimore, who at that time was the president of Caltech and uh, Nobel laureate. Uh, and his, uh, had one, he had one of his postdocs call me, and they, he said, we've been reading some of your papers, yours and Dr. Rebos's, and you know, we've got some ideas about immunotherapy for melanoma, but we don't have any patients over here at Caltech. In fact, we don't have any doctors over here, so Tony and I went over there. I think we were the only people wearing tie, jackets and ties on that campus. We met with uh, David. And the byproduct of that meeting is a whole new dimension of a major research collaboration between Caltech and UCLA on immune-based therapies for melanoma. So I can tell you that as someone who has done research in this disease for 40 years, since I was a first-year medical student at Johns Hopkins, and as the senior surgical oncologist here at UCLA, this, um, um, this is the most exciting time and the most gratifying time to be involved in the care of patients with this disease. Our understanding of the biology of what's going on, our ability to offer patients effective therapies, therapies that have increasing efficacy um, um, over time, uh, it, it's, it's a field where almost every year we're adding something to our armamentarium, we're adding a new dimension of our understanding. 
and I can tell you that it's just it's just very very gratifying, uh, um, uh, very very gratifying to um, uh, to be um, uh, to be part of a group, uh, a, a large team effort uh, uh, in um, uh, in caring for uh, patients with this disease. A year ago, the Chancellor asked me to be Vice Chancellor for Research at UCLA, to be an officer of the university, and to have responsibility for oversight for our $1 billion research enterprise. Um, actually, there are no surgeons doing this sort of job anywhere, anywhere else. But I told the Chancellor that I absolutely would never give up the privilege of practicing medicine and caring for patients, and that uh, he would have to um, uh, he would have, um, uh, he, he was generous enough uh, to uh, allow me to maintain a practice in, uh, in melanoma, which I continue to operate one day a week, and to continue with the, uh, with the translational research that we're, that we're doing. And I think it's actually worked out very well to be not only the, the individual responsible for this research enterprise, but someone who's actually conducting research and, and, um, um, and continuing to maintain a clinical practice. So I'd like to thank uh, um, like to thank uh, Valerie. Had a nice chat with uh, uh, Amy Harmon, who, whom I've uh, met before. But I particularly want to thank all of you. And I recognize uh, now that I'm up here, I'm recognizing more faces that I didn't didn't see out there. But I want to thank you all for coming here on uh, uh, fighting your way into the parking lot on uh, on one of our commencement Saturdays. And we're looking forward to this morning's session. Thank you.